you use the term the occupation of Palestine. Mm. What did oh. you mean by that? Oh, um, I think it, what I meant is like the, the settlements that are increasing in, in some of these areas and, and places where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, difficulty in access to uh, their housing and homes. Do you think you can expand on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd also just, I, I am not the expert on geopolitics on this issue. Capitalism has not always existed in the world and it will not always exist in the world. Isn't it disturbing that the quote, future of the Democratic Party doesn't know how the unemployment rate is calculated? You said leading up to last night in the election, women like me aren't supposed to run for office. You did, you won, you were outspent 10 to one. Why did you win? And this admitted communist that just won the primary in New York, she's a communist who preaches race war, class war, right out of communism. Now there's a quote. Moreover, this is put out by her. Moreover, not only is this about gender and race, it's about class. Yeah, I don't just question the patriotism of the Abolish ICE movement, I question their sanity. And the danger I see is that it's become a mainstream view. Um, Ocasio-Cortez is a member of the Democrat Socialists of America. This is the same group that organized the protest against our Homeland Security Secretary at the restaurant. These are shrieking radicals who oppose any immigration enforcement. ICE was just established in 2003 in the same suite of legislation as the Patriot Act and the Iraq War. In order for us to feel safer in our streets, our churches, our schools, and our homes, we must abolish ICE. So you have called for a number of things, one of them being to abolish ICE. And that human rights abuses are happening in, in without uh, any sort of transparency or accountability. That is where we're at right now. That is simply what is uh, happening. I would note those facilities run by, by HHF. Alexandra Cortez, hey lady, if it's so good, go to uh, any of the third world countries that have got socialism and see how fast you run out of there with your tail between your legs. To some, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez winning the 14th Congressional District represents a turning point. America making a sharp turn in the direction of socialist democracy that is sorely needed to mend the wounds of a failing capitalist system. Oppositely, it is just a drop in the ocean, an overblown story by media members who hope to turn socialist views into the norm. With just 13% of voter turnout, Ocasio-Cortez upset Representative Joe Crowley, who has been in Congress since 1998 in a race that saw just under 28,000 people turn out of a possible 215,000 registered Democrats in the district. Somewhere in the middle, however, the pummeling headlines and TV coverage heralding Ocasio-Cortez as the next big thing in politics echo sentiments that many have accused the Democrats and American left as a whole of hiding deep within the depths of their own offices for many years. Again, only 15,897 people voted for Cortez. Yet the way she's been covered, you'd think that she was the DNC's new presidential candidate. So, are the DNC critics right? Is her platform exactly what they've been hoping for? Is this why left-leaning media are parading her out? It seems rather interesting that talking points such as open borders, gun bans, abolishing ICE, free housing, and a litany of other bullet points were long shrugged off by Democrats with a sentiment of how dare you. What a ridiculous claim. Not only are these no longer considered radical stances, they are being brought up as often as Twitter users bring up impeachment of Trump. It should come as no surprise then, when Fox News displays Ocasio-Cortez's wild platform on TV, she takes a screenshot and enthusiastically says, pretty much. Where does it go from here? Well, again there are likely three viewpoints on this. To supporters, the winner of Queens and the Bronx is the new face of the Democrats. Progressive policies can win across the country. Sanders Cortez is the wave of the future, so step aside, crooked capitalists. This could mean a breakup of the DNC. The Democratic Socialists could very well take up their own position as a new party, leaving the DNC to live or die on its own. I mean, why not have more parties? As a Canadian, the idea of just two parties does seem quite foreign. On the other side, you could say this drop of water is going to evaporate very quickly. Democrats are crooked but they won't put up with pure socialism. They know it's not going to fly with most voters. In addition to the fact that any split of the DNC is going to result in a massive loss of votes for them and them only. 
division amongst Sanders voters has already hurt them. A turn to socialism will cause not only a loss of DNC voters, but likely push even more to the Republican side, a story that has no doubt been told, seemingly the focal point of why Trump's victory was so large. Democrats do like power and money, but they aren't socialists or communists. Look no further than CNN's mocking of Bernie Sanders' healthcare platform. I did a lot of homework, talked to a lot of experts, some of which you've used as well, to try to break down single-payer healthcare. It's very complex, very scary to people, uh, but let's try to simplify it. And I got three big main points of pushback for you to defend. Um, here we go. The first one is, I've written the word socialism. I'm not here to beat you over the head calling you a socialist, but the problem with the selling point of this is, it smacks of the end of capitalism. I'll be an easy theory to debunk. The DNC's turn away from the more ridiculous claims as abolishing ICE showcases at least somewhat they aren't ready to go all the way left just yet. Congressman Mark Pocan introduced the abolish ICE bill in the House, but now that Republicans are willing to bring it up for a vote, says he would vote against it. He's here to explain that. So why would you vote against a bill that you supported? Sure. Well, I, I, Tucker, you know, I introduced it on Thursday with nine co-sponsors. Uh, generally, there's a process where you build support for a bill. There's no way this week a bill would pass. There's no intention by Republican leadership to have it pass. So it's done for a political ploy because the reality is nine days from today, we have a court mandated deadline to reunify the 3,000 children that have been separated from their families. And we're not going to hit it right. And the Republicans in Congress refuse to say anything that counters the president on this. So uh, I'm glad to talk about about that problem because I think it's it's un-American, it's inhumane, it's cruel. Well, of course you are, but you've also introduced. No, of course, no. I, you, you love to talk about that, but but you introduced a bill to to get rid of ICE, and even people who are concerned about our current immigration system and they don't like the separation. I get it. Abolishing ICE seems kind of radical and crazy, as you know, which is why a lot of Democrats are embarrassed of this position. The middle ground where most choose to stay seem to have realized silliness when it unintentionally rears its seemingly socialist head. A communist utopia, that's what they want, right? One can easily identify this to be a mirage, requiring boatloads of money from other people, acquired only through forcible tax increases ranging anywhere from 70 to 100 percent. What happened to taxing the 0.1 percent of the 1 percent? Abolish prisons? Ban guns? Guaranteed government jobs? Free Medicare? Where is all this coming from? Women's rights? Support for LGBTQ? Support for seniors? In 2018, most people can tell that these are just empty sentiments from those who say, we'll figure that out later, but have no real plan. Often resulting in money in the pocket of special interest groups for things like sensitivity training, or even in some cases, just a blank check. And like mother, like daughter. Ocasio-Cortez's platform of empty platitudes is followed suit by her willfully uninformed fan base, who are indeed delusional enough to feel that they're the informed ones and everybody else, they don't know what they're talking about. So much so that they actually wrote her in to win New York's 15th congressional district. A total of zero votes for the winner, as Ocasio-Cortez declined to change districts and stick with the 14th. A mockery of their voter turnout? Definitely. Sending a message to their government? Maybe? Socialism and communism by extension is groupthink mentality. And I don't doubt for a second her voters had the mentality of, let's just write her in anyway and show our support, instead of the much smarter move, which would be to write in a different person and control two different districts. Simply observing these aforementioned empty platitudes, or these countless protests disguised as movements, but more accurately described as activist rallies, brings people mostly to the same conclusions. These supporters might mean well, but they really, truly and honestly have not thought of any of the counterpoints, consequences, or methodology when it comes to their views. And it really didn't take long for Ocasio-Cortez to be in the spotlight and have her paper-thin rhetoric be laughably exposed. Well, yes, but I also think that what people are starting to see, at least in, in the occupation uh, of, of Palestine, is um, just an increasing crisis of humanitarian condition. And that to me is just where I tend to come from on this issue. You use the term the occupation of Palestine. Mm. What did oh. you mean by that? Oh, um, I think it, what I meant is like the, the settlements that are increasing in, in some of these areas and, and places where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, difficulty in access to uh, their housing and homes. Do you think you can expand on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd also just, I, I am not the expert on geopolitics. When your views go unchallenged and your political or economic acumen comes from BuzzFeed and Fox, supported by an echo chamber of social media news and activist bloggers, this is unfortunately what you get. In any other instance, 
A person with views similar to Cortez would likely resort to yelling, insults, or feigning being offended before storming off. We've all seen it. No historical context is required. Everyone else is ignorant to these views and is likely racist, sexist, capitalist scumbags. There's no way they've thought about it and realized that these are simply poor viewpoints. This is why these views aren't popular, because when challenged they fall apart. This is why these views aren't popular, because those who espouse them legitimately have not thought them through. And when your views are nothing but parroting talking points, in this case, Israel is evil and I don't know why, you risk coming off looking incredibly uninformed. And what is Aleppo? Unemployment is low because everyone has two jobs. Unemployment is low because people are working 60, 70, 80 hours a week and can barely feed their kids. And so I do think that right now when we have this no holds barred wild west hyper capitalism, what that means is profit at any cost. Capitalism has not always existed in the world and it will not always exist in the world.